Good morning, everyone. It's Susan back for her second installment of Questions and Answers, and today we're focusing entirely on weed pull training. First question from Jean in Arizona. Uh, questions about spacing. Does the spacing of the pulls matter? Uh, I really don't think, and not in a big way, as long as you're consistent in using the same distance for each set of weed pulls. Uh, you know, those of us in North America, our dogs are going to have to weave on 20 inch spacing or 21, 22, 24 until this gets uniformly, um, all venues say we're all going to weave 24 inches, ideally. Until that time, my gut instinct would say to train on the shorter distance because the dog's going to have to bend more. It's easier to go from a, a tighter pole to a wider one than the other way around. If the dog's used to a 24 inch pole and you go down to a 21 or 20, um, you may find they start skipping poles. So I'd start on the smaller one. Same question came in from Heather and Terry. How many sets of two by two weaves does it need to, do you need to train a full set? Uh, I, the, the best case scenario is three sets of two. That a lot of the manufacturers, if you go to the website, and we've got a list of manufacturers that are building to the specs that I laid out in the DVD, that a lot of them are offering promos when you buy three sets of two. You can do it with two sets of two, but three sets of two really um, gives you more flexibility. So uh, if you, I'm assuming you have a set of six, maybe a set of 12, but it's a set of six poles that you can build into your training, then your three sets of two, your way to the races. And if you have to work footwork, you need six sets of two, but maybe you can get together with a friend who also has uh, three sets of two. Okay, this is a comment that was made on another blog that was forwarded to me, and I thought it was important that we deal with it. And he says, I'm, I have been letting my dog fail over and over, and just like Susan suggested in her book, but he's not enjoying it. This is critical. This is a critical misunderstanding of what I was saying, that you don't throw your dog into the deep end of the pool. The failing is, needs to happen early in the training. So ideally, it's away from agility in just shaping tricks that the dog learns that when you withhold reinforcement, they keep trying. And even if they stall out and, and just sit and stare at you, you're not going to jump in and help them. Then you need to do it with just two poles and build from there. So if I was working on some of those advanced weave entry exercises that are in the ebook and my dog failed, I could let them try and continue to fail because they've learned to fail. But you can't expect a dog to start at their PhD if they haven't tried kindergarten and grade one to eight and high school and university. So please don't over face your dog this way. What may happen is classical conditioning may Teach the dog that when you see poles, um, it's a terrible experience and you're not going to like it and um, there's no chance of reinforcement. So you may actually poison the experience for the dog. So please, please, please do not just start at the top end and let your dog continuously fail. Okay, question from Russia. Can I start the 2x2 program with my 5-month-old puppy? Uh, yes, you can, but I would not suggest it. So I like to wait until my dogs are physically mature. Because the process goes so fast, they're going to be weaving in, in no time flat. So my, my puppies, I like to aim for 13, you know, probably 14 months or maybe older. And if, depending on the breed of dog, if it's, a, if it's a large breed, you might wait until 18 months or even older than that. Some people like to start shaping the two poles with their puppy so they learn to rehearse finding the, the correct entry. I would not recommend this because you're teaching that puppy see two poles, blast at a hand gallop and get your toy. And what's going to happen is eventually when you add your second set of poles, you're not going to have any weight shift. You're not going to have a collection of stride for the dog to, to, to bend back. So it's going to be very challenging for that dog to actually be able to weave at all. So please do not start these things with your uh, with your puppies. Okay, I would like to purchase this DVD. However, I live in South Africa and would like to make sure that it will work on the DVD players here. All I can tell you is that my Crate Games DVD, which was manufactured in the same facility, um, has been sold in more than 30 countries the, around the world and uh, I have not had a single complaint about it not playing. Uh, now, if you have a really old, old DVD player, maybe it might not, but um, you, you know, if you have a, a, a fairly new DVD player, you should have no problem. I guess if you wanted to be completely sure of it, you could um, fly me over to South Africa. I, I could bring along a DVD, pop it in the player, and if it didn't happen to work, I'd be happy to take it back home to Canada with me. Okay, Melissa says, uh, do you, it seems like you need a lot of space for the 2x2 two two weave training. My area is 6x10. No, really, you could start your weave training in a small area, but I would caution you from doing too much. That... Um, as I keep saying, the process goes really fast. So 
if you keep it in a tight area, you're going to be conditioning your body into the into the program. So your dog's going to learn that they only weave if you're within six to ten feet of them. You, it's okay to start it here. Maybe do a couple of days of training here, then take it to a bigger location. And ideally, you're moving this training all around so the dog, you know, gets to to train in different environments, um, and they learn to generalize that great behavior in all environments. Okay, this question came from Christine from Canada and Marco from Belgium. When you speak of 12 poles in 12 days, how long of a session would you aim for? And Marco says, I try stopping after 10 to 15 minutes of practice, but I'm as motivated as my dog, so it's sometimes a bit hard. Okay, you two sound a lot like me in that I love to train and my dogs love to train, but trust me on this, less is more. As a human being, it is impossible for you to focus and have great mechanics for 10 to 15 minutes of solid training. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be rehearsing crap. You're going to be reinforcing things you shouldn't have, you shouldn't be, and you're not going to be reinforcing other things where you should have. So if you train for a lot shorter session, you're going to actually get more results. Um, on the DVD with Trendy, in the first week, the 21 sessions, the average was just over one minute of, of total training time, each one of those sessions. And that includes, you know, one session where she just kind of stalled out and sat and stared at me for, it seemed like forever, but that session was almost three minutes long because I would not help her. She had to learn to fail. Uh, with, even with that, the sessions were just over a minute. So, um, with my own dogs, uh, they might be three to five minutes long at the most when I'm training a specific skill. Uh, put that dog up, get another dog up, out, uh, do some record keeping in between. And if you're record keeping, you know, this will be a great way to break up your session. So please do not train continuously. Um, if you if you don't have another dog to train, I, I had to put a basketball hoop in the building, uh, you know, years ago to prevent me from overtraining. I'd stop and shoot some hoops. From Pat, are the DVD orders coming to the US from Canada how long would you expect great question Pat and the answer is no we have a fulfillment station in the US in South Carolina and um, all of the US orders are being shipped from the US so how long it takes I know somebody who ordered uh, a DVD in San Diego on Friday and they got it by Monday now that's amazing somebody else who ordered one on Friday in New York still didn't get it um, today so it depends on the U.S. Postal Service. For those of you ordering in Canada, they're all being shipped from Say Yes here in Canada. And overseas as well, they're all coming from Canada. So it um, gives you an idea. In, no, in the U.S., no problem. You're going to be getting yours as quickly as we can. For Melanie, Elf is the second dog I've trained um, using 2 by 2s If she's not successful in her first attempt at the poles, she goes into this frenzy, throw herself at the poles trying to be correct, but of course not being able to be correct because she isn't thinking anymore. I've decided to remove her option to do the polls when this happens and take her away from them for a while. Okay, there's a lot more going on here, Melanie, than just too much value. There's a lot to do with arousal states of the dog. Um, but be careful. Yes, punishment is a great tool to use in training, but record keep. Absolutely record keep and make sure the dog's getting, you know, at least 10 times more reinforcement than they're getting punishment with this. That dogs tend to stress one of two ways. The easy ones to see are the dogs that stress low and they start sniffing the ground or walking away, shutting down. The, the ones that are a little more challenging to get a hold for people to identify with are the dogs that stress high. That when they fail or they, they don't get the reinforcement they expect, they get more anxious, which makes them higher. And um, the more punishment they get, they get higher and higher and higher. So in actual fact, this punishment may be part of the problem. Uh, I'm not saying not to do it. I'm just saying record keep. And I would personally take it away from agility and shape some tricks and see how she deals with, deals with failing when you're just shaping tricks and, and before you go back and, and work with it on the poles. From Christine, I'm going to be putting your DVD and 2x2 two two method to a rigorous test. I have a 7-year-old Border Collie who could not master the weed poles through any other method. That sounds like a great challenge. Um, there's no physical reason he can't weave. He just doesn't have the mental discipline. Okay, Christine, same as Melanie. I would take it away from weave pulls first, do some shaping, shape him to engage his body, shape him to back up a flight of stairs, to back his rear legs up a, up, up a, up a wall, um, so that he becomes aware of his body and he learns to learn and learns to fail. And if you do that, I know that this method, you're going to just breeze through it with no problem. Uh, keep us posted. Let us know how you do. Okay, this one came from the newsletter. Question about footing. So the three places that she has to train, uh, sand that's not very well packed, slippery rubber matting, or outside in the snow. 
what would be my advice? My advice would be wait till the spring. That if you're starting a dog training, uh, weaving on these surfaces, they're potentially going to learn not to engage their rear end at all. And they'll just be pulling with their front end. So you're not going to get great results on any method that you use to train weaving. So um, I guess my, the best choice you have there would be snow as well as, as long as it's fresh, well, you know, snow that's not really packed, that they can still get good purchase. But Again, the method happens so fast, guys. There's no rush. Put it away. Work something else in that sand or slippery surface. Contacts. Um, something where the dog doesn't need to use their back end to, to dry, dig into the surface. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you all for the questions, and have a great day.